Welcome to Podcast 3-3, Triangle Inequalities. In this lesson, you'll learn three theorems that will answer the following questions. Can any three segments make a triangle? Given two sides of a triangle, how long will the third side be? And finally, given the sides, which angle is the greatest? Or seeing this in reverse, given all the angles, which side would be the longest? Using the sketchpad activity from this lesson, let's take a look at the first question. Here are three sticks joined at their endpoints, or three segments. Will these three form a triangle? And if you open this file, you can manipulate it on your own. But will they? Obviously, these three sticks, if you will, will not form a triangle. They won't reach. Nor will, well, this will obviously make a triangle if we move this down like that. So these three sticks, if you will, form a triangle. But how about these? Uh, it's sort of a, a way the, the software has to work, is that points have to have some kind of size, but theoretically points have no size at all. So don't be confused in thinking that that actually is forming a triangle, because we know from the segment addition postulate that 2 plus 3 will equal 5. So the only way these segments will join is when this collapses, in which case there's no triangle. So here there is no triangle, here there's no triangle, but it sure did work over here. So what's the rule? Why is it that these three numbers make a triangle? To determine a conjecture or a rule out of this, you'll see that the 2 and the 3 add up to equal 5, and that doesn't work because it collapses when they touch. Here the two shorter sides, the 2 and the 5, are too short in which case their sum is less than the 9, and this didn't work. And over here you see that the two shorter sides, 4 and 5, their sum is more than the 8. So as a rule, we can say that the two shorter sides must add up to be more than the longer side. The theorem is three segments joined at their endpoints will create a triangle if the sum of any two segment links is greater than the third side. So the sum of two sides must be greater than the third side. So in this case, A plus B greater than C, or B plus C greater than A, or A plus C greater than B. All of these possibilities must be true in order to make a triangle. The second question I've posed to you is, given two sides of a triangle, in this case 5 and 8, how long is the third side of the triangle? There's not just one answer to that. This dotted line, the third side of the triangle, at the moment is 11.84. But there are other possibilities. Just having two sides of a triangle creates infinite possibilities for the third side. Here now it's 9.6. The question here is, well, how small could the dotted line become? And as this moves around and collapses, you can see that the value for the third side is approaching the number 3. Because when it's 3, it's collapsed. It's no longer a triangle. So this third side has to be more than 3. But how much more than 3? 6, 7, 8, 9, 10? When will it be too long? Will the dotted line become 20? Now there's a limit to the dotted line as well. In this case, when it expands to the point there, it's collapsed again, or collinear. The dotted line is 13 which case is not a triangle because it's collapsed. So the dotted line must be less than 13. So the range of the possibilities of the third side of a triangle is between, subtract the two numbers, 8 minus 5 is 3, or add the two numbers, 13. So again, the possibilities for the third side of a triangle are between 8 minus 5. Now I don't want to say 5 minus 8, that'd be a negative number, so we tend to say the absolute value of 8 minus 5, and it's going to be smaller than, let's add those two values. So it's going to be between 3 and 13. The theorem states, given two sides of a triangle, the length of the third side is between the sum and the difference of the other two sides. And again, take the absolute value of the difference. 
So the third side, C, is between subtract A and B and add A and B. And that will give you the length of the third side. The last question is in two parts. Given three angles of a triangle, which side is the longest? Well, we kind of saw that idea over here. The more of these two sides opened up, or the bigger angle B became, the longer the dotted line became. So this dotted line, or this side, is related to the size of this angle. So again, the larger this angle becomes, the longer this side becomes. So if this is the largest angle, this will be the longest side. Or, if angle B becomes the smallest angle, then this will be the shortest side. So there's a connection between these two opposite parts. Therefore, if angle A is the largest angle of this triangle, 92 degrees, then the longest side must be opposite this angle. And opposite that angle will be the segment BC. So BC will be the largest. Be careful of the order in which the question may ask. Here's asking for the shortest first, the longest last. The smallest angle, angle C, will be opposite the shortest side, which in this case will be segment AB. So this must be the smallest of the sides, or the shortest. And the middle sized angle, angle B, 57 degrees, will be opposite the middle length side, AC. We can do this in a reverse method. If I know the, the measures of the three sides of the triangle, then the three angles would be relating to those sides. The longest side, AB in this case. If this is the longest side, then this must be the biggest angle, opposite parts. So angle C must be the largest of these angles, and they're asking for that first. The smallest side, AC, 3.5, would relate to the smallest angle. Again, opposite parts. So angle B would be the smallest, and whatever's left just has to be in the middle. The theorem states the greatest angle is opposite the longest side. In this case, 10 is the longest side, A is the greatest angle. Angle A corresponding with segment BC as the largest or greatest parts. This has been Podcast 3-3, Triangle Inequalities.